We are in Barcelona, just 10-15 minutes away from the city center. We run here several research projects and also one big academic program. Every year we try to finish with a prototype. It's warm composting. So that means that we don't have water, we have warm composting and that's why they need ventilation. We try to cover all the different processes that makes a building possible. And at the top here we've got solar panels, but then also this is a great water catchment area using gravitational filtration before it's finally captured and brought down into the systems storing the water below the house. So there's a composting and biogas generator. There's food growing on top. And this would permit somebody to sustain a two week period just with living inside the house. We want to make sure that we educate a generation of people that is able not to fabricate their own things or assemble their own buildings, but also produce and manage their own food. As you see here, we have a series of orchards. Part of the activities that our students uh, develop while they are here is harvesting their own food. So two years ago, we decided that the final project would be a solar greenhouse. We have installed solar panels encapsulated in glass. So it's simultaneously, it's allowing the growth of the plants, but also generating electricity as well. You're using the solar for? Yeah, the solar here we are using for running our appliances. We have LED lighting, essentially just a combination of blue and red LED lights. It's actually the right spectrum the plants would need to grow. So the lightning is only for getting a couple extra hours in winter when there is like short days. So it doesn't stay all night? No. No, it doesn't need it like, that much. It wouldn't need all night, but you actually can leave it all night. Like the, the salads don't necessarily need like a sleeping time, I would say. Like they could have the sunlight all the time and they would just grow a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is impressive that you're getting this much growth in January. Yes, 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 yes. And these are like planted maximum three weeks ago because it's just that extra bit of daylight exactly it's like that and also like you have more control like we have some salads in the garden but we also have like a huge farm with wild boars here so this is also like a protective area so it's also solar because the shape is oriented in the perfect orientation towards the sun so despite the fact that this is a square plant the rooftop is basically tilted, generating that kind of diamond shape for the harvesting of electricity from the sun. So these uh, solar panels, this company has specialized on being able to encapsulate a high efficiency solar cells in glass. So basically the most important thing is that if we put conventional solar panels, then we don't enable the light, then therefore plants cannot grow, right? We decided also to go with, with glass to avoid all the plastics and, and these were basically leftovers of a very large project for a skyscraper. Solar powered greenhouses, combining these two we thought is, is, is now possible and makes so much sense. You know, you can use the energy of the sun to grow these lettuce simultaneously that you are generating a kilowatt that, you know, uh, powers the light. That's another form of enabling the plants to be growing. No? But also very important for us of this greenhouse is also the materiality of the prototype, which is also timber. This timber is very special because it has been uh, sourced directly here from our valley as part of a sustainable forest management strategy. In Vaidaura, we have the mandate to remove between 2 and 3% of the biomass that we have in the valley that, that we own. Why? Because removing an old tree in the forest enables all the smaller trees around to get some light and grow. And this reinforces the soil, prevents the landslide, and enables us to extract a renewable material to do things with that, right? Basically, we have a series of mills, very small ones, that enable us to cut in slice the log. Once it's cut, we dry it. And then after that, basically, we have a small press that we glue them together to create this kind of like component. Is that cross-laminated timber? Yeah. Correct, CLT. So you see that we are using always uh, 
odd number of layers so it's either three or five or seven the first layer goes in this direction and then the middle layer goes in the other direction and the the next layer goes in the vertical so we are kind of crisscrossing all the timber ensuring that this works very well as a as a structural wall <laughs> instead of building with concrete wall, this in turn offers same structural quality, but at a much lower or even positive environmental cost. Is this something that, that you could apply to housing? Absolutely. Everything we do at Vaidaura is meant to be a small seed of a larger project that we could one day implement in the city, right? So basically this solar greenhouse is conceived to play a major role in the rooftops of buildings in larger cities. One example is that we are in the process of starting to build, it's actually under construction. We're actually doing the tallest mass timber social housing building in Barcelona that will have the first solar greenhouse ever done in Barcelona on the rooftop. This makes sense to be deployed on top of buildings that don't have the space to grow their own foods. And these days, rooftops seem to be a very good opportunity because right now there is pretty much nothing happening there. They are problematic because of the heat island effect, right? We have radiation and the radiation hitting the building directly. So by deploying greenhouses on top of buildings, we can reduce the heat island effect. We can have energy for our buildings through the photovoltaic panels, but also we can start producing our own food within the same building that we are living. You can see that it's on two levels. The upper part is more like the greenhouse part in general, where you plant the things. It's like the productive area. And the lower part, it was a perfect addition for us to build this germination area here. We can start from these like trays. Here you can see like some starters are coming. And then from here, we either put into the greenhouse or our garden. So all of the system is a hydroponic system. So we fill it up with water. Whenever there's too much water in it, it overflows and it goes into our tank outside. And you see these knobs here in the end. So this maintains that there is not too much water. And then these, they just have the roots hanging in the water. And also like this little bit of soil, like if I'm just taking out like a plant here, it has all the roots in it. But for example, when we are planting it upstairs now, it is good that it already has a little bit of soil, so we like minimize the transplanting trauma. And then also down here, because we wanted to have the top part as clean as possible, we have all of our utilities, our water tanks are back here. Here we are like adding the nutrients, like we can open this. And we fill up this tank like maybe every three weeks. Here goes the water in, fills up the tanks. This is from our cycle when the water comes back, like any excess water that is like, because it's a dripping system, goes back into the tanks. Then we have one main pump down here, which is then distributed into our three watering cycles. All of these things are automated, so I can like access it through my phone from basically everywhere in the world and say, okay, water now. One of them, this one is going here for our germination area, which is essentially just an overflowing technique. Right now I have it here standing on automatic and automatic, but I could also switch it on manual and it would start putting out the water here. But normally this is like automated. It fills this up like twice a week. So there's always water maintained. And so are there sensors to know where things are happening? You have to just- Well, we have it. a couple sensors. We have a sensor in the tank that tells us it's empty and then it stops the pump. But in terms of censoring, we only have then if our pumps are still working well. These are like telling us if we keep the right water pressure because it can also happen that they clog and this is just more or less monitoring the water cycle itself. So what's the, what's the water source? We have like a big tank which is collecting rainwater also from all of the house. Yes. And it's actually quite a lot because I don't know if you've seen the terrace area we have in front of the building. All of this is also essentially brought into our rainwater tank as well as the rainwater storage we have right down in the valley. A big part of our water, there is like a hundred years old water storage down in the valley. 
and we built like an extra solar structure there to like power a pump that can bring up the water that is like over the year collected there. We have like a, the dripping system upstairs. It's just like very little amounts of water that gets feed into the plants. So this is in general more water efficient than a normal garden. Should we take a few of each? Or? Uh, I think we can take some of the salads here. So I'm just going to take a couple of these. When you see that the roots are already at the edge of growing, the plant actually recognizes that it can grow more, it needs more space. So we are bringing it upstairs to give the plant more space to grow. And also it has the automated watering system there and also gets more of the sunlight. Yeah, so upstairs there's more sun. Exactly. Up here we decided that we wanted different growing systems. It's all essentially the hydroponics and we're using the sawdust, which also comes from our own carpentry. So it was the thought of how can we use materials that we are using here. So even from processing all of the wood we are using for the greenhouse, we're producing a large amount of sawdust. So this is our substrate and you can see if I dig down a little bit that it is like wet and it holds really well. It's even a little bit warm. So this is quite good for the plants to just like, they are like having the roots directly in the water. We're using here the sawdust as like a medium for holding the water, which is like first, I think quite beautiful because it goes well with the overall look, but also it's beautiful because we're really taking like another waste product of our construction process, which is I think in general, a beautiful concept. So here we have the general, like we decided to have trays on this side because the sunlight is coming from here essentially. And this was planned to have like, okay, the plants that need the most light. So in summer, this is mostly reserved for any solanaceae, which is tomatoes, cucumber, maybe eggplant, or any climber plants. That's why we have these little strings here already. We had in summer like tomatoes growing up all the way. There's like two reasons for that. One is that they would get first all of the sunlight because tomatoes need a lot. And then whenever they grow up, they would give some shading to the salad, which can burn during summer. So we would shade it a little bit. It's like diffuse sunlight and the plants are working together. Some types of salads just don't do as well as others, but these are the ones that we have been like very like successful with. Yeah, they look great. And we are already harvesting all the time, like because Whenever you like get like a leaf here, it like regrows like in a couple of days. So this is just something that we come here, we pick a leaf everywhere and it's like we're not like chopping a salad directly. So and it's delicious, like amazing to just come here and like grab a leaf. Mm, yeah. So I'm very happy about the overall outcome of this, definitely. It has been quite a thing of like uh, building it up from basically just cutting the trees from the forest. When the year starts, we just go out and we select the trees around the forest, which get cut down. And then we bring them to our backyard and we let them dry for a bit. And then we have even our own machine to put these long trees into long boards. And then from there, like maybe onto the CNC or our CLT press. CLT? Someone say CLT? So at this point, really every piece of wood has been going through our hands. You had every piece of wood in the hands here, like you have seen everything. Like maybe we are lucky. <laughs> Almost every piece, most of these parts at one point have been like somehow digitally fabricated. At the same time, you didn't uh, spare. Sometimes when you take that approach, things don't look that great sometimes. Mm -hmm. In your case, for example, I see here these beams with the round corner, you yes. are just trying to put some beauty to it maybe? Well, we were trying to make it 
like aesthetically pleasing of course but we were trying to like make it that it doesn't look like it's just all single pieces like okay we needed shelves but how do we implement shelves that connect back here to our main structure so it's not something we just build up in here but rather is connected to the overall scheme since everything is planned before if we already at the point where we have our columns designed with the notch in here and the notch was already thought for on the other side there is like the insert for all of our facade system which we have all custom designed i don't know how many hundred pieces it was of like making these it was actually quite a hard process but the result i think is quite astonishing also in terms of like we had to figure out the layers of them and then inside outside and then the next one has to be like offset it and like all the ones in the top here in the in the roof yeah they are like very much custom these windows like these hinges here they have been like designed and 3d printed here in the house they are like meant to lock into this position but then they also when you open them they're locking in this position it took us very long time to like even think about okay how do we even want to open the windows how much do we want to like self-build it we were looking for some type of hinge which could fit this like from here it's like this should go up because it just like gives all the ventilation through it but we couldn't find the right hinge that we liked so we are like okay let's design it ourselves and we have the technology to just do it ourselves so we actually did it the rooftop pieces you can see that there is a division here like this is the structural beam and the top here on uh, the top part is just like for holding the glasses so it has like multiple levels you can see it maybe here better where it has like steps in it yeah to like hold the glass in the right place so you have a very strong wind you don't no no nothing is going to happen any. we had huge winds in here because everything's been made so tightly exactly <laughs> That is a big advantage, I think, of the digital fabrication. In the bottom. If you see some of the fittings that we had in here, like how well slotted in, like it really came in just with the sound and it was fitting perfectly. Things fit. Yes, they're all level. For tolerances, it's, for example, this shape, if you don't design it properly, it can crack yes, to the yes, very yes. center. Yes. yes. So the it's idea here is also because it has to like take the loads of the glass, that yeah. we again have this cross laminated situation yeah. where like there's an outside layer with this grain, but yeah. the inside layer has the grains in the other way. Uh -huh. So we are taking off the loads by doing that. And then the inside layer is also connecting into the notch that we have inside here. That's why it doesn't crack there. Exactly. Because, because we are like keeping this here and like stabilizing it with the middle part, which yeah. is in offset grain, like just rotated. And then also here, there's a dowel with like some foam. And this is like keeping the place in glass and like not that it's not. I'm not making it wrap together in, in a way that could eventually crack on the corner. Exactly. It has been doing very well. Like we had some huge storms up here and nothing happened. Yeah, we can put, put three in here one in here and then we put another three in here yeah these salads also definitely need to go you can see that they are like getting quite tall and it's called leggy okay. so they're like trying to reach out for more space but they don't have so these are already at the point where we should also plant them definitely this is cauliflower so wow it's gonna be big then no yeah, that's why we're putting it up here because the cauliflower roots need a little bit more space in the bottom the salads they don't have any like weight but a cauliflower when it develops it gets quite heavy and then suddenly it just like lose the weight because also you can see the sawdust is not very compacted mm -hmm. it's just for holding the water and the roots itself they don't need to be compacted so i'm also just like lightly tapping it so it's like holding in here but then the rest is like really done just by the roots developing into the sawdust. Now what I'm just doing is I'm putting the irrigation system quite close to the main plant itself, which back here you can see like a watering line, which are all these connected to. So when the water comes in here, these are the first roots that get it. But in general, as you can see also in here, there will be like water developed that will be all over. Like it's quite... So there's always water standing in there. <laughs> you enjoy getting your hands dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I love how you just seem to love this. Yeah, yeah, I really do. I think it's uh, about the, the right like approach to it, but I think everybody would enjoy gardening if they just like look at it in, in the perspective of like, oh, I can grow my own food. It's like you see how like effective you can be. 
the value of the salad is just a lot higher for us here than we just buy any salad. Also the freshness for me as like a hobby cook itself, like it does a difference in terms of taste of like how the, the salad is. It's like very crunchy. It's like hasn't half like moved a lot. Like you can tell. It's also very convenient. I mean, just yes. to be able to walk to yes. your roof and pick some salad rather than think, uh -huh. I didn't really buy any greens, so I'm not yeah, gonna eat yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I really think uh, in like a rooftop situation, you would have to think a lot about participation of people that live in the building. Because of course, there's like a, quite a lot of work that goes into like, whenever I take out the salads, I redo all of the sawdust, like we put it back out and I put new sawdust so it's not like contaminated. But I think these are the things that also would maybe add another like social layer of when you put it on the house. You can just join me here, have some of the lettuce. We can always put it in just here. The teeth marks over here. Teeth marks? Like teeth marks. Uh oh, who bit into the salad? Oh, where do we have this? Oh, up here. Because in the end, it's not that much work. If you're working all the time on a computer, as we do here a lot, for me, it's quite like meditative to come out here and just do something with the plants. You have the opportunity to escape digital world, sitting on a laptop. And sometimes after a day of just working on the computer, it also feels like, what have I done? And if you like spend one hour in the garden, you're like, wow, I've done so much today because you see the results so like physically. Also here you have like huge leaves when they get too big, but they're more delicious when they have them smaller. So yeah. it's a good size to actually harvest them. Otherwise they just grow bigger and bigger. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of big leaves down here as well. Why not take them? Because as soon as they are like overgrowing each other, they would shame each other. Uh, you would basically boost the growth of the plant by removing leaves. Mm -hmm. So you're, this is like a yeah, quite nice like thing of cultivating something because joy interacting with the garden, I think. You see when a plant does, does well, you see when it does not so well. Like you see when a salad, for example, develops a like dry leaf, you know, it doesn't have enough water. Yeah. So it's like something that you always have to observe your garden and always make decisions upon like what you see around. And even aesthetically, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The wood is incredible. You can feel it in here that it's like a nice, it really gives me this like natural surrounding feeling. If I see all the wood, I see all the plants growing, I see like the sawdust and you do something with your hands, you like touch it. I think that gives so much value, which is maybe not just the classical value of a greenhouse itself in a, like a standardized way. 